The thought of Sean Mendez crying in a porta potty, farting out a soggy banana. What's up, dogs? It's R back again, bringing you that sweet, spicy, family friendly content. Today, we're gonna talk about fan fictions, and we're not just gonna talk about them, we're gonna write one. Fan fictions are these beautiful, amazing, romantic tales told by very frustrated. People. I guess not all of them. Some of them are pretty chill, but uh, a few that I've looked through already are pretty tough. But so I've never written a fan fiction before. I would love to start, but how do I start? What do I do? So let's start off our search for inspiration by going to the beautiful website Wattpad. 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 Um, I've logged in. I, I searched up Trap House because I can't imagine there's any shortage of amazing stories about these beautiful young men. I just stumbled across this story right here. It is called Trap House Smut with a quite dapper, beautiful picture of Colby. So this should be good. So the first thing I'm noticing is uh, the table of contents, which I'm not sure I actually want to read any of this now. But we got chapter one, Daddy's Home. Let's just let's make a guess based on the table of contents. So daddy's home. Let's assume because Colby's the picture uh, Colby comes home from a long day of work late night party Colby gets a iPhone text heads out to a party where he meets the author of this story Then we got the following chapters kinks the master his car. I guess you could just use your imagination We got yeet update. I don't know if that's a real chapter and then down the storyline We have a chapter called rip so I don't know who dies But uh, there's like seven more chapters after that So I don't think a dead body is stopping anybody. Let's go ahead and pick a chapter Let's check her out me and Colby we became best friends in the 10th grade. I moved to LA with him and moved to the trap house with everyone. I started thinking of him again while I was in my room and it turned me on some... Eh! This is, uh, this is a great read! I looked up to Colby smirking. He pulled me by my waist under his lap and kissed me roughly. The f how do you- Kiss me roughly. It's a really weird imaginative way to look at kissing. Is he like punching you in the face with his lips? Like... I love you, bitch! Cause that doesn't sound like something I would enjoy at all. He grabbed it. Ah. Uh, oh god. Hold on, princess. I don't wanna. Ah. Uh, Colby would never do this. Oh shit. I was wondering why I couldn't find any. I accidentally typed in Colby Bork. There's something dark inside Jake after the seance. Colby seems to be the only one who notices. The relationship they have behind closed doors comes out and inevitably turns into a disaster. Colby sighed. <sighs> Alright. I'm gonna use the bathroom. Hope you're okay on your alone for a second. I nodded, bringing my head down and hiding in the sleeves of my black no-name hoodie. Colby was a comforting presence to have around, but when he left me alone, I found myself feeling vulnerable. Nice, Colby. So, Jake's just obviously scared in this haunted hotel and you're just gonna go take a shit and leave Jake to cower in his black no-name hoodie? Nice. Ghosts don't hurt people, right? Uh, sorry Jake, that's actually like the one thing ghosts are known to do. Hey, I'm right here. Eyes full of worry and confusion. How do you do worry and confusion? Worry's like, and then confusion's like, I'm right here, Jake. Something pushed me, dude. I spoke with a shaky voice. Something pushed me, pawing at my face with my sleeves in an attempt to keep the tears from leaving my, my eyes. Something pushed me. Just to summarize the rest of the story, it was great. It just wasn't really the inspiration I need. Maybe if I search a story about myself, that could be a little bit better. At, at least more relatable, you know? <sighs> well, so uh, after some extensive research, I don't know whether to be relieved or offended because every story about me is uh, terrible. We got one about me in a relationship with a bird. We go on dinner dates, share worms. He sits on my head, what the fuck? Me getting attacked by a furry, and then Reggie walks over to you and starts to kiss you on the mouth hole. He kisses you lower and lower down your body as low as the knee. Suddenly, he begins to massage your feet. You tilt your head back and whisper, oh Reggie, when all of a sudden, you feel your toes are wet. Are you fucking kidding me? You look up to see Reggie sucking on your toes and licking your feet. He drools all over them until they're drenched and Reggie spit. Thank you so much, author. I didn't exactly find the inspiration I needed. However, it seems like you guys are pretty good at writing these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send out a tweet asking you guys, not for the story, but for the person, place, and other shit. Hello, brothers. I am writing a story for a video, but I need your help. It's been about 15 minutes. The responses are 
horrifying. But what I did so far is I made a folder filled with a shitload of the responses. I'm gonna spend the next few hours writing this story and I just honestly don't know what direction I'm gonna take it. So I guess we'll find out together. I'm expecting it to be somewhat Mad Lib style, but a lot of the stuff you guys sent was uh, gonna be a little bit hard to tie together. So I guess we'll see. I'm gonna get my pen and paper. I'm gonna start writing up a story. Let's go ahead and see maybe if we can get a topic going. These are my mentions right now. Flat Earth Potato Lick. Jedi Temple. PS4 Controller. Dying. McDonald's Jesus Butt Plug. Bikini Bottom, Spatula, and a Poop. Thank you guys for making this very easy on me. I guess I'll see you guys when it's done. Okay guys, it is now hours and hours later, and I have finally created the optimal best Wattpad story I've ever read in my entire life. Sure, it gets a little bit disturbing here and there, but the moral of the story is just that it's amazing. But before I read this, I need to invite over a special guest to help me out. Okay guys, so now I'm here with Jake, and uh, he's gonna sit here and read my fan fiction with me. So Jake, if you didn't know, what I did was I sit- causes hideous rot really bad. Steve Irwin, not now. Steve? So, so what I did, I put together Adlib or Madlib style, uh, an entire fan fiction. I wrote it just using their tweets. Dude, that's ill. If you don't mind, I'm gonna set the mood real quick and let's get into it. Set the mood? Dude, we're brothers. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I, I wrote this entirely using the tweets people sent me. So if you hear anything crazy, it, it wasn't my fault or idea. The title is called Garfield x Joe Bros. The Search for Eternal Love. Uh, the description is, Garfield is a cat who hates Mondays, but mostly hates being alone. Should be pretty good. Me too, dude. It's a four part series. I worked super hard on this, guys. Uh, actually, about, about this is about five hours work that you're about to hear, so let's get into it. Jake, I'm gonna do this, but I swear to God, if you touch me. Okay. Ow! Prologue, a lonely cat. Entire story from Garfield's point of view. It was a cold, lonely Monday when I first felt it. The crippling lonely void I felt within me that not even a lasagna could fill. I've always hated Mondays, but this one was especially tough. I've gone eight cat years without finding love, and it was all beginning to catch up with me on my way home from Burger King. I felt a warm liquid run down my face, but I wasn't crying. I was making the mistake of peeing into the wind. Wait, how did the pee get on their face? He was peeing into the wind. And the pee came back and hit him in the face. Yeah, if you guys aren't guys, probably haven't peed outside very much, but if you pee and the wind's coming towards you, it's just gonna hit you in the face. I stormed into my house and smacked an air freshener. A random guy riding a line strolled past and yelled, this is my first time doing crack. I was at my lowest and decided it was time to find my soulmate. End of part one. Oh, I'm ready for part two, man. How do I go about finding love in a competitive world filled with cats? I began my search and headed to the mall. On my journey, I felt a burning sensation flare up beneath my tail. I knew I shouldn't have stopped at Burger King. I continued to walk, clenching my asshole. I attempted to distract myself, but my train of thought only led me to one place. The thought of Shawn Mendes crying in a porta potty, farting out a soggy banana. Ow. Oh. What? Do you think Sean Mendes has done that before? I feel like nobody would have thought of that unless it's happened. I'm not like a Sean Mendes stan, so I haven't seen all of his interviews, but I'm sure at some point he's talked about it. Like, do you think that he, you know, he's performing on stage for like a billion people, then goes backstage and it just shits out a banana? No, this was said he was farting out a soggy banana. You think? You, so I don't you think, think he can he... shit out a soggy banana because it would just fall apart? Oh yeah, but if he fart out, he's. <laughs> Just splatters and then the water just shoots right back in his butthole and it just like gives him enough boost to go back and perform one last <laughs> I slapped myself silly to rid my mind of that scenario as it was only making my situation worse And that's when I saw them Kevin Nick and Joe Jonas the ideal match for me I was especially drawn to Kevin my mind went blank, but I still had to poop my mind was filled with curiosity But mostly I was just internally screaming my ass, my ass, my ass. <laughs> Dude, who do you think has the worst poops out of the Jonas Brothers? I feel like it's an easy Kevin. I'm saying Nick because he's a buffer, so he's probably got like protein poops. Oh, I feel like Kevin probably eats like... He's married, so he probably just eats like vegetables. Kevin? Yeah. Isn't that the correlation? I guess so. Is, is Nick married? Oh wait, aren't they all married? Okay, so it, so it just comes down to the protein poops. Yeah, we gotta go with Nick. Nick has the stinkiest poops out of the Jonas Brothers. Part three. Oh, I'm, oh god, oh boy. I frantically begin to wonder how I'll approach them. Joe is the first to notice me. He stares at me coldly and exclaims, My brother stuck a fork in an outlet at our school gym. He didn't get electrocuted. Confused, I shakily reply, Have you ever kidnapped a chair? 
Joe became defensive and ran to the freezer. He returned with an arctic pickle and immediately duct taped it to my nearly erupting ass. The cold- <laughs> Like in the inside? It's up to interpretation, dude. It's, it's more than that at face value. It's an art that you kind of have to relate to. If you don't get it, you don't get it. Wow. The cold, chilling pain felt as if he was vaping toothpaste into my ass. It was so cold, it could have stopped the icebergs from melting. It was at this moment when I realized, me and Joe simply weren't compatible. Nick catches my eye next. He was very cute, but he was busy getting a tattoo of the Statue of Liberty and the Sham Wow guy doing the thug tug. What's that? I haven't looked it up yet, so I'm hoping that it's nothing too shocking. Guys, let me know what a thug tug is. What's up? In the comments. Actually, no, just tweet it directly to Jake so he's confused when he wakes up tomorrow. Thank you. And then that's when Kevin approached me. He was glowing and beautiful like Michelle Obama's big juicy red tomato. His bone structure was perfect and slightly resembled a handsome Squidward. As I'm trembling with both curiosity and the searing pain caused by the urgent need Need to shit my pants. He utters, I want to build you something. I'm so nervous, but attempt to gather my emotions. I somehow get out the word, okay, and that's when it happened. I shit my pants. End of part three. Oh my god, what happens next? Part what four. happens next? This is part four. The date. The date. The date. See, with, like, with Kevin. The suspense is really building here. Even though I wrote this off of like the tweets, like I'm I'm hooked and I fucking wrote it. My question is how is he gonna continue on the date with this guy knowing there's a log of shit in his pants? I wanna know where this log goes <laughs> and where this relationship goes. Part four. The date. Oh my god, I'm ready. He invites me to follow him to a Chuck E. Cheese dumpster, which he converted into a studio apartment. I finally gather the courage to tell him that I need to take a shower, hoping he doesn't realize why. So the poop comes out. Oh, but what that? happens when the poop hits the drain? You squish it down with your toes. Oh god, I wish I'd have thought of that. Yeah, you just have to squish it down with your toes. I feel like that's what most people do. That's why I have Crocs, so I don't have to use my sticky ass toes. I finally gather the courage to tell him that I need to take a shower, hoping he doesn't realize why. He smirks, and as I feared, knows what has happened. I'm not sure what gave it away. The fact that it smelled like Sam's Choice Garlic Croutons, mm. or the audible sound of the potato-sized turd bouncing around in my underwear, <laughs> like a volleyball hitting the woe on a trampoline. What the fuck? <laughs> Don't worry, he utters, with his voice as raspy as my grandmother's garbage disposal. It's not my first rodeo, he says, as he points to the meatloaf-sized lump in his pair of black pants. <laughs> he begins to scoop it out with a single sock before yelling, Hulk smash! and yeeting it out the window. Now that he's made me feel comfortable, I feel calm. Yep. Wait, so he took the poop out for you and threw it out the window. Again, bro, it's all subjective. It's art. If you don't get it, you don't get it. What the hell? I so he, he, Kevin Jonas took the potato-sized poop out of Garfield's pants <laughs> and threw it out the window and said, yeah, No, he smash. yeeted it out the window. Yeeted. Yeet! But dude, it's, it's literally like, it's, art is so flexible because me reading that, sure, you could think of it as he's taking the sock to scoop the poop out, but for someone, you know, dealing with uh, depression, they might think of the poop as their depression and the scoop is uh, the acceptance and love that is needed to cure it. Or like someone that has anxiety. The poop is his anxiety. It's just he keeps it all bottled up. In his underwear. In his underwear. He keeps his anxiety all bottled up in his underwear. Maybe him and Kevin aren't that compatible because when Kevin made, wait, maybe he, Kevin made his anxiety go away because he, he yeeted it out the window. Because his anxiety once was through the roof in the attic, but now I think it was in the basement. It was in the basement and you know people keep things in the basement that they can't get rid of but it's always there yeah. and he threw it out the window. Just completely wiped it clean. Wiped it and clean. And that's the definition of true love. I'm glad you're finally getting it dude. I get it now. I feel calm yet confused. We both sat in silence for a moment like Teletubbies at a strip club during a zombie apocalypse with nothing but custard and the need to boogie. He finally breaks the silence and says I want to show you something. And like a magician, he begins sharding out a knife. Oh, fuck. He, he then uses the knife to create a beautiful finger painting of Harry Styles picking his nose with a dildo. I want you to have this, he says. I begin to blush. Brava! And my mood changing fluffy handcuffs reveal that I am flattered while also slightly disgusted because his lingering shart was drifting into my nose like an Antarctic breeze. I knew the exact words I wanted to say, but it was hard to get out like trying to pee out an entire dog collar. I finally begin to utter, I love you. Gibby interrupts me mid-sentence, bursts through the door and yells, I'm moving in with you. The end. 
V Gibby. Like the Gibby. Gibby! The what the fuck? And that's it. However you interpret it is how you interpret it. You may see it as, you know, just a dirty, filthy, gross story. I see it as a young man, a young cat, discovering love for the first time. And that's me for today's video, guys. Also, guys, wait, wait, wait. So Kevin Jonas threw his anxiety out the window, but Gibby is his depression. Oh yeah. And it interrupted the relationship and said, Gibby! You can also think of Gibby as uh, newly found insecurities because maybe now that he's so attached to Kevin, he's scared of losing Kevin. So he finally starts to feel comfortable and he's about to say I love you when all of a sudden bursting through the door, Gibby! All those insecurities begin to uh, devour him. Wow. But anyways, that's me for today's video, guys. Whatever you take from this story, you know, put it forth towards your life to create something amazing. I want you guys to comment down below what you interpreted from this. Exactly. What do you think Let happened? me know. Let me know. What's the truth behind this story? And, well, that's me for today's video. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Shout out this week is going to be Sydney. Thanks for watching, Sydney. If you want to be next week's shout out, tweet me, leave a comment, write an entire fan fiction about why you think you should be a uh, shout out of the week, and send it to me. I'll read it. I'll see if I can make it happen. But anyways, I'll see you guys next week. Freaking weak, brother. Bye. Peace. Yo, just smoked a blunt and now I'm entering a state of bliss. I met with Lady Ecstasy and she gave me a kiss. I dreamed about you in a color that does not exist. I'm feeling excellent, things cannot get better than this. My mama checking in my bedroom, but I ain't there. I'm feeling things and hearing things, but baby, I ain't scared. Two steps in the dark and now we're here.